Let's talk about the markets in three minutes and focus the start of our conversation on the debt ceiling. I mean, somebody was describing it yesterday to me as, you know, the short end of the Treasury market is reacting to this, but stocks really aren't. To some degree, you could say maybe there was a uh, this was weighing a little on sentiment yesterday, but not to any uh, not to the degree we certainly saw back in 2011. How do you see markets dealing with these debt questions? So I think it is restraining a little bit of risk taking. Everyone is expecting that the real action around this in markets is still a few weeks away. I think very close to that, that June 1st deadline. And no one really believes that's the deadline, which is part of the problem, is that we're going to probably go beyond that. And in fact, there might be a little bit of action around June 1st. We'll probably go through that. If we can get to mid -Jaloon, we can June, we then can delay it a little bit further. So I think the real volatility around this is, is farther in the future. Uh, and therefore, it's not trading too much in markets at the moment, apart, as you say, for some kinks at the front end of, of money markets. Um, but it is restraining a little bit of risk taking. If you're an equity portfolio manager, you're aware there's going to be more volatility ahead. Why really rev leverage up right now knowing that is coming in the future? OK, so that's something that weighs on risk taking. We also see futures pretty calm this at uh, this moment, uh, just past seven o'clock here in London. Then, Mark, uh, European futures look pretty flat. Uh, US futures look flat, flat to, to positive, perhaps, for those. Uh, we are waiting, of course, for the CPI data. Are you concerned that we could get a hot print and the markets just aren't positioned for that? I am, but I, I, I do wonder whether, you know, it might be slightly, slightly anticlimactic in terms that we're really, really focused on the CPI print, as we should be. But the story here is, up until a couple of years ago, we'd stopped caring too much about inflation print. We'd been in, in decades of not really having a material inflation threat. We haven't had something like that, uh, the recurring experience for 40 years. And, and occasionally there's deflationary threats, but not when growth was strong. So inflation wasn't the big print. Suddenly in 2022, it became what everyone cared in markets. It even surpassed non-farm payrolls, the big data point. It is starting to decline on impact again because everyone's aware, no matter what the inflation print comes in today, it's really about your recession timing. When the US recession hit, that's going to be the bigger call for changing the Fed cycle. So, yeah, I am worried that inflation generally in the US is stickier than people think and won't come down quite mm. so soon as people think. Um, but I do think that today's uh, data point might be slightly an anticlimactic. The, the dollar, of course, has lost a, lot of, lost a lot of ground from its peak levels that we saw last year, Mark, as the market sort of got used to the idea of a pivot to come a, a long time ago. Just briefly, what do you see in the dollar then? Why do you think that the dollar bearish trend is looking tired? Yeah, I do believe in the long-term dollar, dollar bearish trend, but it's really a long-term issue. There's some structural issues. The world is overexposed to a currency that's slightly losing its influence, but I don't want to overhype those kind of themes because they're very much long-term. Short term, the market is short dollars, and particularly in the big pairs. We've seen that in Euro dollar. Everyone is very bear bullish Euro dollar, and it's not trading well overall. So I think that that's a slightly tired theme of dollar bearishness. We're seeing the trading price action change a little bit. We get a slightly stickier print today. Yields can squeeze higher, and that might really squeeze out some of the dollar bears.